see that you not be deceived, our Lord says. And Augustine teaches us that there are eight kinds of lies, and the first one he discusses is the lie about religious doctrine. And this is the most evil because it is a lie or a sin or a deception against God himself. Therefore, it is a sin against God to not believe these sacred texts because the church puts them forward not for her own pleasure or gain or to simply entertain us, but because we hear God when we read these divine sayings. God speaks to us through his word, never to deceive, but always to guide and to lead us on the road toward salvation in the midst of this real fallen world. Now, for to be deceived in life is one of the things that can cause the most harm to human person because it destroys trust. And trust is vital for healthy human relationships, and it is how we live in the midst of a community. It is through real personal relationships with others and God where our development takes place, or the lack thereof. And all of this relies on trusting other persons, and often it is just simply based on their words. That simple face-to-face -face encounter and trusting what they say. In the spiritual life, we can even deceive ourselves, thinking more highly of ourselves, or worse than we truly are. And these are the two extremes that must be avoided, and how we must learn what true humility is, knowing what we can do and what we cannot. But what is deception exactly? It is a vicious action that proposes a true evil under the guise of an apparent good. In a sense, it moves us to desire that which, if we are told the truth, we will most likely avoid. In a sense, it is coated with truth on the surface, but underneath it is an empty and hollow lie. It is understood that the first thing the enemy did when he spoke to Adam and Eve is to seek to deceive, to twist the truth, to get them to undermine God's word and God's command, to undermine that true instruction, what was truly good for them, and to get them to abandon the foundation of their life. And this they did. And now deception is commonplace within the midst of a fallen world. And the reason our Lord says the words, see that you not be deceived. And the first step on the road is belief in God's word. Not as some naive man or woman, but as reverencing sacred scripture for what it is. A place that gives me wisdom a place that gives me moral instruction, and information to my soul that is unbelievably helpful in the most practical and the most contemplative ways, where we come to know God. But further, as Jordan Peterson mentioned in one of his lectures, it has outlasted kingdoms. It turns out that a book is more durable than stone. It is more durable than a castle. It is more durable than empires. To regard these stories as nothing but superstition is to be very poorly informed. And that you are if you regard it as such. But further, it is the place where the soul encounters the living God. And experiences his presence, his love proclaimed, his warning of the last things, his salvation expressed in words and deeds. In truth, it is everything necessary to facilitate and understand the most vital information about life itself. And this is why the church is ruled and nourished by God's word as children of the Most High, listening intently to it and hanging on to every word that Christ speaks to our hearts. 
recognizing he speaks to me. He died for me. He rose for me, and I must respond. I must entrust him with my whole life. 